Hello, Joel Lindstrom here. Let's talk about the Dynamics 365 team member license restrictions that are coming with Wave 1 of 2020 for Dynamics 365. So if you aren't familiar with team member licenses, team member licenses were the original XRM license for people that don't need sales, don't need customer service. It was designed primarily for light use, for users that maybe are just need to read a bunch of data or maybe just create some basic records like activities and some custom entities. Um, it can read any core entity data and you can create and edit certain records like contacts, activities, notes, and you can have up to 15 custom entities. One thing that they added about a year and a half ago is that you can't create or edit accounts with team members. But the problem is Microsoft never enforced that. So uh, you could really have a team member, and if you somebody gave you a system admin license, then you could really do whatever you wanted to do. And that was kind of unintentional. And some customers you know, seriously didn't know and got into uh, scenarios where they had team members doing things that team members shouldn't be able to do. And the, but the limits have also changed. So people that bought team member licenses before uh, 2018, they could create and edit accounts where team members with um, team members after that, they changed the licensing to say you can't create and edit accounts. Uh, now, Microsoft is going to start enforcing team member licenses in wave one of 2020. And we'll get into how they're going to do that. But what you need to know is existing customers, uh, you don't start getting enforced day one when you uh, get your update to wave one 2020. That happens at the end of June. So you do have a couple month grace period in order to make the changes that we're going to talk about in this video. Uh, new customers starting now are basically uh, enforced from day one. So if you buy a team member, you're going to have the limitations from day one that we're going to talk about in the video. One of the ways that this is going to be enforced is through some new security roles. Uh, there's a new role called sales team member. And what sales team member includes is the core entities that uh, users should be able to have access to, uh, such as activities, reading accounts, reading contacts, creating activities, creating notes. Uh, and you can see it's pretty limited. This security role is read-only. You can't change it. Um, but users who have team members are going to have to have this to support the app that I'm going to show you next. One thing to note is there are no custom entities in here. And so you can give team members additional security roles uh, that have additional permissions as allowed within the team members. So you'll want to create a, team, uh, a custom security role that has the custom entities that you're, you're using. Uh, some of the other entities, such as uh, you know activity, it only gives user level. So you would probably also want to, in your custom role, give... If people need to, for example, read additional activities, you'd want to give that to them in their in their custom role. The second piece of how this is going to be enforced is through two new model-driven apps. One called Sales Team Member, which is def which is installed by default. The other one is the Customer Service Team Member, which is not installed by default. And if you but if you go to the Power Platform Admin Center, select your environment, and hit Manage Solutions then you'll be able to install that app if you're licensed for customer service. So if we go into the sales team member app, uh, you'll see that it's more limited than what the sales hub app has, but it's very similar. Uh, you, you have leads, you have opportunities, you have accounts and contacts. Now keep in mind, you can't create accounts if you have the new team member role. So uh, if I go, I, can, I still see the new button because I'm a system admin. But um, you could add dashboards to this. It's just a very scaled back app, which is uh, in line with what a lot of simple use scenarios need. And uh, so what you need to know is your sales users that have team members need to have that role and need to have this app. This app and the other app are the only two apps that people with team member licenses can use. So if you have an existing custom model-driven app, or if you're still using uh, Classic UI and you have the 
uh, big monolithic classic application, you're going to have to move those users. If you're an existing customer with team members, you're going to have to move them into this app and customize this app to add the things that you additional functionality you need to it uh, again and give them the role. And this will prevent you from adding more than 15 custom entities to the model driven app. If I go into the customer service team member app, you'll see that it's a, a simple customer service app. Uh, if I go to cases, I can create a new case, but what you'll see is it's a much scaled down case and there is no way for me to change the customer. Here's what this is for. Team members allow people to create cases for self-service scenarios. So for example, internal help desk. You could have a team member and use the customer service team member app for them to create cases for their laptop not working, things like that. They're not going to be able to create the uh, create a case for a customer. Now you still have to have the customers, so that's why we have the default account. Inside the settings now, there is the ability to set that default account, and then anybody who uses the customer service team member app will be able to, they will automatically select that account. My prediction is I think this will be useful for people even that don't have team member licenses because it's not uncommon for people to do an internal help desk type scenario, just want a simple case. This is actually quite nice in my opinion and that default custom account, it could be your company, it could be whatever you want. And so uh, this may actually be useful. They, they can also search the knowledge base. So again, self-service help desk scenarios, this is quite useful for. So here are my recommendations. If you're an existing customer with team member licenses, before the end of June, test and move your team member users to one of the two team member apps with the appropriate security role. Create a custom role to handle your custom entities and if you need to increase the permissions on things like activities. If you need more than 15 custom entities or if you need to create accounts and you're one of those cases where maybe unintentionally you were violating the terms of the team member license and now it's going to be enforced, your users won't be able to do what they need to do, consider moving to a Power Apps license. The Power Apps licenses either per user or per app give you the ability to have users use more of the full common data service, including creating and editing accounts, including uh, full use of contacts, activities, uh, everything but the, the restricted entities, and as many custom entities as they want. So a lot of XRM scenarios fit very nicely within the per user or per app license. And the per app license gives you access to up to two apps, and it's not a lot more expensive than team member licenses. If you need the full control over cases and opportunities, then you probably are going to want to go to a full Dynamics 365 license.